In the eastern harbor of Alexandria, Egypt, lies the remains of the Lighthouse of Alexandria. It's one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and stood for almost 1,500 years before it was destroyed by an earthquake in 1303. Today, we're headed out to explore this incredible underwater archaeological site and to see if we can locate one of the 30 sphinxes that are said to lay just below the waves. So just behind me is the harbor in Alexandria, Egypt. Now this ancient city in North Africa was actually home to one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, and that is the lighthouse here at Alexandria. Now it has since fallen down many, many centuries ago, but the blocks that constructed it are sitting in the water just outside the harbor, and that's what we're gonna go bee diving on today. This site is steeped in history and we couldn't be more excited to be able to dive it. And we had to get some permits that were 500 Egyptian pounds to be able to dive and photograph this site. And on the way out, we've actually got to check in with two government official checkpoints because this is really an ancient underwater museum. Man, I, I think it's just gonna blow me away. The remains of the ancient lighthouse lay just outside the entrance to the Eastern Harbor. But before we get there, we first have to stop at a couple checkpoints. At the first checkpoint, we need to request permission to be underway within the harbor. It takes a few minutes time, but we're soon underway to our second checkpoint where we need to request permission to exit the harbor and dive the remains of the lighthouse. Once outside the harbor, it's a short trip to the dive site located just beyond the citadel that was constructed in the 15th century as a defensive fortress on the site where the Lighthouse of Alexandria once stood. Immediately upon descending, we hear our guide tap on the back of his tank to get our attention. And we know that whenever we hear the sound, we're getting closer to something exciting. It looks like it might be the base to something or maybe a cornerstone. From our amateur eyes, it's hard to say for sure, but we can easily imagine it as part of a larger lighthouse. Nearby is another large piece of stone. I have no idea what this one is exactly, but it certainly emphasizes that this dive site requires some imagination. Visibility drops from bad to worse as we move along, and I begin to wonder if we are ever gonna find one of the 30 sphinxes that we're hoping to see. Like this one, or these from the Avenue of the Sphinxes in Luxor. 415 miles or 667 kilometers south of Alexandria. It's now impossible to see anything including each other. But just as I consider activating our lost diver procedures, visibility opens back up slightly and we run into each other in an area that appears to contain more blocks from the lighthouse.
Sarah's the first to see it, but it appears to be part of a massive column. And as we explore the area, we discover there are sections everywhere. It's possible that these columns could have once looked similar to the columns at Philae Temple Complex, which is located over a thousand kilometers to the south of Alexandria near Aswan, but it's hard to say for sure. Columns had distinctive parts to them, including the abacus, capital, shaft, and base. We've clearly found several column shafts that were often decorated with carved reliefs or colorfully painted but it would be fantastic to find some of the other parts. As we search, we're reminded that not all the ancient lighthouse actually rests at this location, so it may not be possible to find what we're looking for. In 1477, over a hundred years after the massive earthquake destroyed the lighthouse, the citadel was built as a coastal defense against the Turks. And to speed the construction, several blocks from the lighthouse were repurposed and eventually became part of the citadel. Continuing our search, we find something new, a part of a fluted column that contains shallow grooves carved into the surface of the shaft. And not far from the fluted column sits what could be the column base. Now all we need to find is the capital that would have sat at the top of the column. And as luck would have it, there's one nearby. running low on gas and time, but we're still hoping to find a sphinx underwater. But to our surprise, we first discover signs of daily life. With all the growth covering everything down here, it's impossible to see the actual stone, but removing just a bit of the algae shows the true off-white coloration of the blocks. Our guide signals again, and it turns out he's found what we're looking for, a sphinx, laying half buried in the sand and without a head. Nonetheless, we feel we found an Egyptian treasure few people get to see. Make sure to check out this incredible underwater adventure next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time underwater.